What's going on everyone? My name is Jason Vinson and I am a wedding and documentary photographer based out of Northwest Arkansas. And today we're gonna to be talking about part three of a three-part series where I walk through a set of images from a bridal session and explain everything that went into making them. The three parts are bride prep, portraits, and this last part we'll be talking through a creative after dark portrait. So with that, let's jump into it. Okay, so to start things off, while today's image is part of a bridal session, this is absolutely something that I would do on a real wedding day. When it comes to doing these on a wedding day, what I normally do is wait for the traditional parts of the wedding reception to be over. So things like first dance, cake cutting, speeches. Once party dancing starts, what I'll do is simply leave and kind of wander around and try and find an idea, or I'll try and find a location that works for an idea that I might already have in mind. Once I have a spot, I get everything set up as much as I possibly can, and then I go back to the reception and let the couple know I'm ready whenever they are. Sometimes they're ready right that second, other times it takes a few songs. The idea here is to get them a super cool and epic image without them feeling like I'm pulling them away from the fun. So it's just a matter of waiting for them to take a break from dancing. Now, let's talk about the gear. For this image, I'm shooting on the Sony A9 paired with the 24mm f1.4 G Master lens. For lighting, I'm using two Stella Pro Reflex S's on top of C8 Auto Stands from Cheetah Stand. The reason I love using the Reflex S is that it is a constant light that also acts as a flash with digital burst. This is really important for this image because we're actually going to be using one light in constant mode and the second light is going to be in burst mode. The idea here is to use a slow shutter speed in order to get some blurry motion through the frame, but I still want to see the bride's face, so I don't want that to be blurry. So I have one light set to burst mode with a spot optic attached, and this is going to just light the bride's face. Because the light is in burst mode, the quick pop of light freezes the bride's face, even though she might be moving or the camera might be moving. The second Reflex S is going to be set to constant mode with a medium optic attached. This optic allows me to get enough spread of light in order to cover the dress, but I still have enough control in order to not get light on the floor, walls, or have any light spill onto the bride's face. And because I'm in constant mode, my camera sensor will gather this light for as long as the shutter is open. So to recap, one light is a quick pop that freezes her face. The second light is constantly on and gets seen the entire time the shutter is open. From here, I set my camera to a 0.6 second shutter speed, ISO 100 and f6.3 for the aperture. Now, I'm at f6.3 because I want my shutter speed to be long. And even in this dark of a room with this long of a shutter speed, I need f6.3 to fully remove the ambient light. I then set the power of my lights to match my camera setting. From here, I just asked the bride to wave her dress around as I took photos. This waving motion paired with the constant light shows a blur through the frame, but the pop of light from the reflex S set to burst mode freezes her face. So that's that. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. If you missed the first two parts of this series, make sure to go give those a watch. In part one, I walk through how I photographed the getting ready part of this day, and in part two, I walk through some of my favorite images I captured during the portrait session. Lastly, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'd love for you to follow me over on Instagram. And until the next one, I'm out of here.